Hello, hello, hello. Woo! You know what's funny is I always, when that when that song comes on, I always realize I'm such a terrible dancer. <laughs> I'm always like, hands hands free, uh, shake the shoulders. So <laughs> I appreciate Why? everyone who tunes in every single week to see us be crazy. As you notice, we have, we're missing some folks. We're missing Jeff. Jeff is on assignment with the Tampa Tribune covering our restaurant. Lucky him. He's eating somewhere, somewhere delicious. And if you follow his feed, uh, you'll be able to see. I'm sure he's going to post the kitchen party hashtag um, tonight, some of his delicious finds. And then Renee Lynch is also, she's at the LA Times right now and she ha she's on assignment and she's popping in and popping out and hopefully we're going to get some um, some cool stuff from her soon tonight. But, you know, we got to start. It's 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern and this is when Kitchen Party starts. So, Welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, my name is Babette Peppa. I'm the founder of Bakespace.com, which is a food-themed social network and recipe swap, and also where you can make your own cookbooks, both as an ebook and as an iPad app called Cookbook Cafe. So Google it if you're interested or come to Bakespace.com, and uh, we welcome you. Now, tonight's guest, um, Melissa Lands, is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Fresh 20. It's an awesome program, and now it is an awesome cookbook. So welcome, Melissa. Yay! I'm so Yay. excited to be here. And if, even if it's just you and me, we're going to party. I, it's like, it's like a, I was thinking with Renee, it's going to be like a hen party. Because my boyfriend always says that when he's like, he's like, are your girlfriends coming over tonight? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, hen party. I'm like, hen party. Woo. So if any of the guys are watching, we welcome you, of course. Um, Melissa, yeah. where are you tuning in from? And is this your first Google Hangout? This is my first Google Hangout, and I am coming to you live from uh, my beautiful hotel room in Catalina. Uh, my husband, it uh, was our anniversary yesterday, and he surprised me. It was a mystery date. That I didn't know where we were going, and he said, just don't be a control freak. I'm, I've got this. You know, I've got this. I'm going to do this. He drove me to the helicopter helipad, and we took a helicopter to Catalina and checked into a beautiful hotel, and he had all this, these activities and tours and everything planned, and I ziplined today for the first time ever, five connecting zip lines racing through the air. It was it was really cool. So job well done, Trent <laughs> Lenz. Now he he doesn't know though. Now he has to plan all of our vacations. So it's a little bit, you know, you, you, no good deed goes unpunished. I was just going to say that. I was like, that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, oh, this reminds me of when you like help someone out and then all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. Now they want me to move their entire apartment. And I just said I'd move one box. Um, that's yes. really cool. That's yes. really sweet. How long have you guys been together? Fourteen years. Wow. So a, a little while, and I love them like the first day. So I'm pretty fortunate for that. And uh, we have two little ones. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. And then I brought, but I brought other friends because you know it's a hen <laughs> party. So I brought my my champagne, my champers which, you know, is always in my kitchen, if anyone knows me. So cheers, cheers to that. And he's on the patio of our hotel. I, I, I spy him from the corner of my eye, and I'm like, is he watching the show? What's he doing? Are you watching the show, babe? <laughs> well, if we can get him a little toasty, maybe he'll come over and make an appearance. Oh, there comes Renee. There Yay, Yay, Renee. Hi, Renee. Oh, Renee. it's the book that dropped. <laughs> up. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, everyone. <laughs> My connection seems to be a little shoddy, but we'll see. Renee, tell hey. us where you are and tell us what you've been doing this week. Um, I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. I'm actually uh, signing in today from the LA Times. I've never tried to do this with my home computer, and so far I've been knocked off twice. So we'll see if this actually stays and works. Um, and what have I been doing all week? Um, I've been working uh, just on a bunch of different food stories at the paper. Not uh, not too much exciting. I had the opportunity to interview Melissa earlier this week, so I was very excited about that. I'm writing a little post on her on the uh, LA Times food blog, so that was interesting. Hey, Russ did an interesting article I saw last night. It was called um, "It Was uh, Liberace's Cookbook." Yes, I, I'm I'm like okay. fascinated with him right now. I, have you guys seen the movie? I, I haven't. I've just seen a few clips. I tebowed it. It's, what cookbook? What? What? what Strange. Is possibly in Liberace's cookbook. 
Well, actually, Russ, uh, Russ mentioned that he, he said that it was actually pretty sophisticated. Like, the recipes at the time were very elegant and very upscale. Um, and I didn't read more into the article, and I was going to save it and actually tweet it out uh, today, and then I completely forgot. So I'm going to do that. I'll do that later in the Kitchen Party hashtag. And But it looks pretty interesting. Like, you see him with his little apron and, like, his crazy <laughs> kitchen, you know, and he's, like, he's like sitting there and he's, like, cooking. And I just, since we started seeing the movie, um, and I've been, like, wikipedia in him. I don't even know if that's a, that's a term, but I've been <laughs> really, like, obsessed with the whole story and about, like, this guy was, like, 17 years old, and it's, like, this whole crazy story. And then when I saw the in the L.A. Times the cookbook, I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I think he owns the cookbook, right? Yeah, he was just, he said he was cleaning out, um, you know, he gets a million cookbooks every day, as you can imagine, and he was cleaning some of his old cookbooks out, and he just came across it. And it's really? so funny, it's like, you could just see, it's just such an older-fashioned looking cookbook with like this I have jacket to see cover this on it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Let you got to get him to tweet out a picture of it. Yeah. I am yeah. in search of this cookbook now. <laughs> I think there's probably like five people who own it. <laughs> I will find one. Oh, <laughs> item. So Absolutely. speaking of cookbooks, so Melissa, how how did that how, how did it how did it go from like maybe we should start at the beginning. So <laughs> where because I, I read a little bit about your bio, and it's like, I wanted to, you know, cook for my family, and I wanted to be healthy, and I wanted to do this, and, like, my story starts with, you know, me versus takeout, um, and I was like, oh, my God, that's my problem. We eat out every single day, pretty much, and it's ridiculous. So do you want to start with, like, the beginning and, and sort of a little bit of that evolution? I was born in... <laughs> not that far yeah, back. So, not that far back. Okay, Okay, so I I really did. I was in a corporate environment. I was crazy, burn out, burnt out, everything else. And I had my kids were three and four, and I really thought to myself, you know what? They're going to turn around and look at me and see what I'm eating and how my habits are. And I would go to the farmer's market, and I'd get all this food, and then there was all this tremendous waste at the end of the week because I didn't have a plan, and I didn't know, you know, I thought, oh, it's I'm going to, like, cook this but then you come home and you're tired so I never I never cooked it so um gosh so many things happen to 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 start the whole idea of the fresh 20 and for me I just wanted to have more happiness in my kitchen instead of going into my kitchen all the time and feeling like it was a place where it was such a burden like oh I don't want to be in my kitchen because I love to cook and even if you don't love to cook the kitchen shouldn't be the room in your house that you don't want to step foot in so it was really okay what can I do like how can I solve this problem for myself how can I solve this problem of, of cooking for my family and having it not be a, a horrible chore and not wasting all the food that we're buying, you know, every single week. So it was just came about that having a plan and planning things out was kind of a lifesaver for me. And buying less ingredients because I have two boys and they're seven and eight and I fear them being teenagers. I'm just thinking to myself, I don't know how I'm going to feed them. I, I honestly, so I'm trying, so, so the real answer is I'm trying to get my kids to understand portion control so that I can afford to feed them when they're teenagers. <laughs> That's really what's going on here. It's a, it's a complete conspiracy plot because I just see how much like boys eat and I'm like, no. So Melissa, did, you, a, did, did meal planning, when you first decided to do this, did it come easy to you? Because I think so many people struggle with how do you even start a meal plan? It's so time consuming. And I think that that was the thing that I was like, this is time consuming. Who, who has the time every week to put together? I mean, you can go and you can pick five recipes off the internet, but they don't all match together and then you end up with an ingredient list of like, you know, 90 ingredients and two, one of them's like Chinese five spice that you're not going to use again for six months. And so it was incredibly, incredibly difficult to, to try and get a formula down to say, okay, this is how I'm going to work with it every week. And it's time consuming. I mean, the, you know, recipe developing takes time to put all the recipes so it's like a puzzle every single week of okay what vegetables are we using on Monday how can I use them again so how can I use a whole red onion you know because that's my you know, biggest problem I, I like I cut right? into that and I'm like oh this is not gonna be good and then <laughs> it's done and then and then a whole how do I use a whole bunch of herbs for the entire week so it was difficult and it was um, just time consuming to get the, the kind of the balance of like putting everything together in a way where I wasn't um, 
like completely depleted from the process. And now it's just it's just a puzzle. It just makes sense. I'm like, okay, if I you know buy one red onion, I'm gonna use it in three meals over the week, and I'm gonna my I have a kind of a like a, a hero herb every single week that you know gets used so that I don't there's not like you know brown parsley or you know thyme. Thyme is one of those things if you don't get home and take it off the stem right away, forget it. You'll never use it. That and like rosemary and things like that. You just gotta like plan to use them all up. And so yeah, now it comes a little bit more naturally after doing after doing the meal plans for three years now it comes like okay like I know how to use a pound of chicken breasts and make it into two meals or you know whatever it and when did, that week. when did you when did food blogging come into this is this how you started your food blog or did the yeah, business well, start before? I originally I mean so many years ago I originally before there before anybody really even knew it, but I was in, an interactive director, so I kind of came into blogging early, and I had a blog like a decade ago, and it was called Inspiration Dose, um, and it doesn't exist anymore because, you know, it was 10 years ago, but I... Um, that was the first thing that I started to be like, okay, what inspires me about cooking? And then I moved into starting to blog a little bit about food, and then it was it was so time consuming that I was like, you know, these solutions should be available. Like this is, I could transfer, like I could do a business, like this could make sense for a lot of, of people. And that's kind of what led me. I was like so bummed out <laughs> with the corporate life that I said, I got to do something different. So I thought I still need to provide for my family. I'm going to do it in a way that makes sense and solves for me, you know? So blogging kind of like swept into it and now the blog is more about you know supplemental information and breakfast we get so many questions about breakfast and so the blog becomes something just kind of support all of the different meal plans but it definitely starts all started with like the idea of just sharing information Melissa do you remember that moment where you thought maybe I have a business here because I think that's so inspirational to people particularly moms who are so busy and frazzled and maybe a home business is the answer to a lot of their their issues. Can you go back in time and remember that moment? I think when I realized, so I had quit my corporate job before the idea for the Fresh 20 came up and I knew I had to do something else and start something for myself and I thought, wow, I'm creating this content. It needs to, I like, I could make a business of this. So it was really the moment when I said, I either have to fire the babysitter or turn what I'm doing into an actual business. <laughs> I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but it was it was just a moment of saying, "Wow, like this is the work that I'm that I'm doing and the service that I, you know, could be able to provide made more sense as a as a business." Um, but it really just was that moment of I didn't want to go back to work. I didn't want to go back into a corporate life, and I wanted to be around my family more, and I wanted to be in the kitchen more. And so it just there wasn't like this like the one day, you know. It was just kind of this overall feeling of yeah, this feels right, and I'm gonna move more towards that than I am gonna move back into a corporate, you know, job cycle. Were you, did you know about how to put together websites like this? And I mean, was this second yeah. nature to you or did you have to? It try? was. And the funny thing about it, I didn't mean to cut you off. The funny thing about it was I, um, I was an interactive director. So I did um, like corporate websites and rollouts for companies, um, for like Fortune 500 companies. And so I knew all of the back-end technology and knew working with marketing. And when I started the, to the Fresh 20, I said to myself, um, I just wanted it to be so low tech. I just wanted it to be so we're now in the process of like completely updating everything because when I started three years ago, I did it just on my own. I didn't use a technology team. I just did it, uh, you know, and it's still the same website. And now that we've grown to, you know, so many subscribers, now I want to add in features and services. But yeah, I mean, there was part of that. But everybody has the opportunity with knowledge to. You know, I pulled in everybody that I knew to give me, if I didn't have the knowledge, then I'd pull somebody in and say, you know, how do you do this? I, I mean, I'm a sponge for information and for learning new things. So, I mean, there are days that I was up, you know, 24 hours trying to figure out how to do something for the, you know, subscriber database. And 
I just think that if you have passion and you love to do something, then you should go for it. And there's nothing better than learning how to do something for yourself. So I've kind of learned along the way for the last three years. So now it's, it's good. I'm good. It's good. <laughs> Hey guys, I want to let uh, the folks who are watching at home know that we are following the Twitter hashtag Kitchen Party, and we're also following on our Google event page. And I'm going to, I just want to make sure a couple of call outs to some folks who come back every single week and some new people too. Uh, Mama Caruso One is also tuning Ooh. in. What's up? Dats for Hello. Foodies. Of course, Dats. Dats. We love Dats. Dats is one of our favorite restaurants in Orlando. Um, if you're ever going to Orlando, not Orlando, Tampa. If you're ever going to Tampa, I just got back from Orlando, so I have Orlando on the brain. Tampa. If you're ever Tampa. going to Tampa, please stop by Dats. They, they have the best that. food. They're just delicious. And they're, they're, they have a menu that they print out from tweets that and like Instagram pictures and things that people have posted about the menu. Their menu is, is like a printout of that news. Oh, that's so, so cool. Like, like it's a social media it's menu. menu. It's really awesome. That's um, it should be a great case study. Um, then I just want to go through a couple more of these names. I love Garrick is also tuning in. What's up, Sandy Ooh. McKenna on Twitter? Corianda Twina, uh, Corianda on Twitter. Say that three times. Said another kitchen party already. <laughs> Where did this week go? Exactly. It's crazy. Every time you tune in, you're like, what? <laughs> Mitch Jenkins is also tuned in. Is in the house. Um, and then uh, oh, Garrick thinks I have a haircut. It's actually going growing a little bit longer. But thank you. Um, and then also, <laughs> Deaths for Foodies said something really funny. I gotta see. Oh, here, what a great name for a band, Liberace's Cookbook. <laughs> mm, I love it. Uh, Gray-haired lady is also on. I tweeted out a link to that article. Oh, awesome! Oh, you did? That's, oh, that's I got cool. It. I cool. Uh, and then uh, I love Garrick says, "What you mean? You don't use Chinese five spices for almost all your recipes at Fresh 20." So I think that was probably a comment early on. We're we're a little bit slow to pick those up. So, uh, and then I just see right now in the in the uh, hashtag uh, Renee's uh, post. It says here's that Liberace article. So if you're following the hashtag, look for that. Um, cool. All right. So, you know I'm terrible at like going to the farmers market because when I go there and I see things in bulk, or if I go into Costco and I see that I need to buy like 500 of the same thing. It puts me in like a <laughs> physical panic. And I'm like, I just can't do it, I just can't do it. So I take myself and I head down to Del Taco. <laughs> I get oh, no. no. <laughs> so, what, what do you say to someone like me who's like, oh, gosh. Are you a bulk, are you a bulkaholic? <laughs> You're a bulkaholic. I, I, I think, no, no, I think I'm, is, am I, am I, am I a, would I be a bulkaholic? Would I be the opposite? Because I don't. I'm like the anti bulkaholic. Like I cannot buy in bulk. I can't. when you're at Costco though, do you buy things that you don't really need? Because I can't. I I cannot go to Costco. I I it's step like in the Costco and it's a it's a, no for me it's a thousand dollars. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by the Costco aisles. I can't go there. I'm just like I go with Trent and we're like. Oh, electric toothbrushes and we're like we're buying everything so I, I cannot go there I have to stick to my lane go to the farmers market or go to you know Sprouts or Trader Joe's where there's not that many choices Costco is yeah. so overwhelming but I do have a friend who's a bulkaholic I mean you go and there's she probably has like 20 cans of black beans and I'm like I don't know unless you're having a party you don't need 20 cans of black beans it's just confusing and it's taking up space and it's and I think that's the thing is that we get into our kitchens and we open our pantries and we open our refrigerators that are full of stuff that and we just go ugh forget it I'll get takeout because it's so overwhelming so don't be a bulkaholic yeah that's, <laughs> what what I, that's my problem what about what, somebody who feels like they want to go to those places because they're saving money do you think that that fits in somewhere I think the best way to save, save money is to plan ahead and to eat good portions. I mean, I would say that that is the best way to save money because I my family eats for three seventy five a serving. So when when I make a meal and that those are for good quality nutritious meals that you know I I can be proud to put on the table and so. And, and it's for, we eat organics off the dirty dozen and we buy great meats. So I think it's in the, the planning and the portion control and the buying quality, but buying a limited amount, you know, and buying things fresh, you can absolutely save money. I mean, I think it's a fallacy that the more that we buy, the more that we spend, because the reality is, is that so much of what we buy goes to waste, you know? And I mean, especially, I mean, I, and I think that 
I think that Americans we're so like we're, we're so prone to like we need to have a lot of everything. So saving money, I just I I economize by just planning ahead. It's the best for me. It's the easiest way because if I don't, I mean, I told you, Renee, that I mean, I went through I think two thousand and nine, like fourteen thousand dollars in takeout. That's a car, you know. I mean, it's so it's so crazy. So now I plan ahead and I make you know choices about food and portions and and uh, my food budget like dropped crazy dramatic so you know I think that's a good thing too Melissa maybe I can ask you to back up a little bit because I think that uh, that may have have gone by a lot of people a little quickly um, you, you when we were talking earlier this week you were talking about that aha moment where you were like holy cow look at how much money I'm spending walk us back through that I think readers uh, viewers would like to hear that it did so I was doing taxes and I realized that I had spent like fourteen thousand dollars on takeout food for my husband and I, and I couldn't believe that I had that I spent that much money. I mean, that money could have gone to so many other places. And I, the the interesting thing was, I didn't even feel good. Like I didn't even know what I ate for the for the fourteen thousand. I mean, it wasn't like oh, you know, we went and we had these great meals. It was just like boof. In French, there's like this table called boof. The, the um. Like it's a kind of a slang word for like what you would eat just like when you're like it's like grub it's the you know the equivalent to grub and I was just like eating just like grub and not even enjoying it and that was the aha moment I was like that's crazy I don't feel good I don't even know where that money went it went into my belly and probably a little bit on my thighs because <laughs> God knows what's in the takeout and you know I just wasn't feeling good and I think that that was the moment that I that I was like I have to start like, being a little bit more interested in what's going on in my kitchen and at my family dinner table. <laughs> now, what but, are your eating uh, out habits now? How often do you guys eat out as a family? We go out on the weekends, so that's our special time. Um, so usually, um, so we eat at home Monday through Friday, and then uh, Saturday we do one breakfast over the weekend out, and because the kids like love to go and do the whole like breakfast, and they, you know, pancake things sometimes, and then um, usually one lunch or dinner, and then the other day I love to have like a slow European style meal where you like make pasta and a salad and we sit down and I have wine, you know, it's my excuse to like have a glass of wine in the middle of the afternoon while we're all sitting around the table, but it's kind of neat to sit at the family dinner table on a Saturday or Sunday and uh, and have a slow European meal, we play cards afterwards, um, so when we get the opportunity to do that, if we're not at a basketball game, don't even get me started about that <laughs> basketball and sports for mothers, I never thought I was going to be a soccer mother, I can't believe it, like every single weekend. And my kids are seven and eight, so wow, um, <laughs> it's a lot of basketball. Um, but yeah, a slow like family meal. So we eat out probably twice over the weekend: one breakfast and one low dinner, and sometimes more depending on you know schedules. But the weekends are like the time, and I think that's such a great you know way to do it. Like during the week when everyone's working and the kids are in school and everything else, we come to the table and we regroup at the end of the day and then the weekends are for fun so we go out during, the, during those weekends and my kids have one day one day a month they have a uh, donut day so one day a month they actually write it on the calendar and like remember and they point to it and they wake up and they're this they're this close to me when I wake up in the morning and they say <laughs> it's donut day and so okay. then they go and we get donuts we we have a confession. Renee and I have this weird thing about donuts. Like, we are obsessed with donuts. They were like two grown women. It's ridiculous. And I think Renee and I would be the same way. We'd be like, it's donut day. I don't know how but that, have you ever had faux nuts? No. I haven't either. What is a faux nut? Renee, have you had a faux nut? No. What is a faux nut? A phonet is like this incredible, uh, or uh, you know, supposedly incredible donut that's like, I want to say it's baked. Maybe it's baked. I don't know. It's like a crazy. There's a shop in in Los Angeles, I think, over on the West Side or oh. something like that, and it's called a. It's a phonet, and people have been reading about these things. And I will actually drive to get a donut. Wow, so, Renee, we gotta go get. We gotta go get phonets. 
And what about cronuts? The croissant meets donut that's taking uh, New York City by storm. I know. I am. Um, mm, that doesn't mm. sound good to me. I mean, I like a good croissant or a good donut. I don't know why we need to to breed those two <laughs> things together. I don't. That doesn't make sense to me. Why? Why? I love Garrick has a question. He said, "Might be a bit off topic, but what would kitchen party have? Okay, but what would kitchen party have any diet? Rec okay, but would ah, oh, I'm I cannot read today. But would kitchen party have any diet recommendations for vitamin D deficiencies besides getting? I think my chat thing. Besides getting more sun. Hmm. Hmm. But, but the sun is the thing. Yeah. So, suns. I mean, I. Hmm. But now, what about vegetables that are rich in uh, vitamin D? Like, isn't spinach rich in vitamin D? Let me see. Greens. Let me that right greens now. in general are rich in vitamin D. So that's always a good, you know, to to beef up on on leafy greens like dark leafy greens. Um. I mean, what else? Oh, technical questions. <laughs> hey, guys, also, so you know, too, I just made a, a, I made a cocktail of fresh <laughs> drinks that has, like, a lot of the pulp in it because I figured out a way to use my Vitamix for the first time. Mm. And it actually worked out okay. I basically got a whole bunch of oranges this weekend. I put a whole bunch of oranges in, cut them up, and then added vodka. So it's oranges and vodka. Yes, and, and some ice. Food. Are like, you telling us that there's vitamin D in, the, no, in that drink? No, I'm just, I'm just, that? since we're, we're thinking about it for a second, I just wanted to tell you because I keep, like, eating the pulp, and I'm like, I can't tell if it looks weird when I'm, like, I'm looking. No. <laughs> <laughs> so just in, in case you see, like, a big piece of pulp fall out of my mouth, that's, that's the reason why. Um, you know, we, we probably, I don't know how much we spend on takeout every year. I would say we probably eat like two meals a day out. Two that, meals? Yeah. A day? Yeah. Every every day. <laughs> every day. Isn't that sad? I mean, I feel sorry. Well, for I mean, myself. think about it. Okay, let's think about it. I so w is that? Would you say you spend a hundred dollars a day on takeout? We probably. Um, it depends. We have we have a system down. We used to when I wasn't a vegetarian, we would share everything. So it was kind of like our way of like cheating the system, where it would be like two for one. Um, but now that he's a, he's not a vegetarian, I'm a vegetarian. We got to buy two things. But then you can go to like Paquito Moss and like for fourteen bucks get like a tostada and a um, mushaladas, which are their delicious. Um, yeah, those are good. That's a good. You know what? I will say this: what my family's done is that when we do need to do takeout, I just identify all the best places to do takeout. So Paquito Moss is a great place for, right. for takeout. They have really, you know, fresh food and you can get things that are, you know, so that's a great place for takeout. And um, there are some, you know, it just depends. Like there's all the places. I just stay away from like the big takeout places that like yeah. the fast food crazy places. So the, the Del but, Taco is, is not, not doing it. <laughs> no, but like why but but why go to Del Taco when you can go to Piquito Mall? That's you know although although, although you know what you and I are gonna do this once because I can make homemade tacos on on I can make homemade tostadas faster than you can go and get takeout at Piquito Moss. Ooh, so we gotta try that one out. I will challenge we gotta you. try that. Because oh, we, uh, we we could do that. Mitch Jenkins says on Twitter, she says, sounds like Bake Space is trying to pioneer the boozy orange Julius. <laughs> uh, delightful, um, I think it's Rapaz, Rapaz? Rapast. Rapast. She hey, Jean. tunes in all the time. She's awesome. You almost have to take vitamin D3 supplements if you're a shade lover, if you're a shade lover like me. So this, she's obviously, she's uh, pretty knowledgeable in that. So we're going to, Garrick, we're going to defer to her. Um, okay, so let's see where we're at. So obviously you went from the blog. How did you go from the blog to the book? I mean, obviously it was... Well, I went from blogging then to create, I went from blogging to then creating a specific business around food. And then because that happened, um, I was featured in InStyle Magazine as a genius website. What, what? <laughs> Hey, can you, can you tell folks about the business and about the meal planning and how that works so that maybe people who are yeah. just tuning in for the first time or watching on YouTube like later on, um, it, this is like, this is the promotional part right here. I want to hear like the pitch. <laughs> the pitch. So um, 
basically the Fresh 20, it is meal planning. It's a service for people that don't want to spend the two to three hours a week that it takes to like put meal planning together. And the whole idea is it's the fresh 20. So it's 20 fresh ingredients every week to make five weeknight dinners for four people, for a family of four. Um, and, you know, it's all about minimizing waste and using only a limited amount of really quality ingredients. The servings are three seventy five for, you know, a complete dinner for a person. And every week we publish content for um I think um like they just told me the numbers today, but it's somewhere between eighty five and ninety thousand subscribers that we have right now across the u s and Canada so it's a lot of people and the fun thing about it is as it grows, people see each other in the supermarket and they have fresh twenty shopping lists and they like go they run across the store and they're like, "Do you do the fresh twenty? Are you doing the fresh twenty and so they're like are making friends and they're shopping together it's really, really cool when we have somebody post about that so the service is really about every week having that plan for those five weeknight meals. But I actually I wanted to say something about takeout because I really want to get back to this. So you're two <laughs> days you're two day two times a day. So even if okay, so let's say you guys are spending fifty dollars a day, right? But over a year, that's like eighteen thousand dollars. If you're only spending fifty dollars a day. And there's days when you spend more. Yeah, absolutely. So you're probably spending like eighteen to twenty two thousand dollars a year on takeout. Wait, Renee, Renee's almost crying. <laughs> Renee was I like, mean, oh no. No, I actually, so, I cook a lot at home, but I realize that I probably end up eating out lunch a little more often than I probably need to, and, and it's it can really start to add up. And as you pointed out, Melissa, it's one thing to spend money on an amazing meal with your husband and have a great time. It's another thing to be eating, you know, something that you just pick up on a Thursday because you're running late and it's just yeah. not very good. And, and usually it's just what we're waste. picking up, because we're late and because we're we're you know we're doing other things, usually what we're picking up, we're not thinking about it ahead of time. So we're picking up something that's really high in fat, sugar, and salt, and it's easy to eat right away. But the thing that saved me is um, thermoses. Um, I buy them in Japan Town, and they're these great you know round, flat thermoses, a thermos, and they um they're great. So I put leftovers in those um you know for my kids for their lunch and a thermos will get you a long way cuz sometimes I think people don't want to pack a lunch cuz they don't want the whole sandwich but you can take leftovers in in these great thermoses and you get them in Chinatown, Japan town and they're amazing. But for that if you just gave up like <laughs> okay so if you switch to making your own food just a little bit even making like a couple of dishes on Sunday yeah have have I mean you know so many people that cook have your friends over on Sunday and have them do some of the cooking for you but if you just gave up a little bit you would save in a year enough to like literally go to Europe for two weeks what <laughs> okay you have a point <laughs> you have a point no that would be, that would be amazing that would be absolutely amazing now I we're, we're we've been thinking we've been thinking about uh, meal planning and trying to have uh, we've been trying to do like bulk chili where it can go multiple, um, you know, like a big pot of it, and then we can eat it for, like, quite a few meals. Um, so we're trying to do more of that stuff. But just the planning thing, you're right. I mean, it is overwhelming. It's just, it's it's depressing as all heck because you go, I go into the grocery store not because I'm like, oh, I know what I'm going to get and whatever. I'm like, oh, my God, we have nothing in the refrigerator. we got to right. go to the grocery store. And then you panic and just get the basics, and then you come home and you're like, there's nothing to eat. Nothing goes together. It's like right. milk, cereal, uh, some fruit, some blah, some blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, I get lazy sometimes, so I'm like, do I want to chop that lettuce up and cut it up and wash it and put it this? And I hear you. I hear you. I mean, the same thing happens to me. The weeks that I don't follow the Fresh 20 or don't have a plan, it's I. It's old habits. I mean, the same thing. I, I go through the same struggle. So that's why it's just really important to me because I have – six eyes looking at me at around five o'clock going, what are we eating tonight? <laughs> and it's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, my husband's not, he, he said very early on in the relationship, he goes, you know, I don't cook. I don't even turn the oven on. I don't do that. I'm happy to do the dishes after you cook, but I don't cook. So, you know, even with like leftovers or leaving, he's six five. 
So if he looks into the refrigerator and something's on the first uh, shelf of the refrigerator and he can't see it, he doesn't even do the lean now <laughs> to see if there's any. <laughs> like he doesn't. There's not even like the. Let me look and see if there's something on the first two shelves. So you know, I when dinner comes around, Mama's got to be ready. <laughs> Renee, what about you guys in your household? You know, I love to cook at the, I feel like that's my kind of reward at the end of the day to come home and make dinner. But um, as Melissa and I were talking about earlier this week, I do not do menu planning. I kind of go to the market and just buy stuff and that leads to one of two things, some very crazy meals, um, but also just sometimes some waste at the end of the week. And I feel so horrible when I throw stuff out. It's just, I can do so much better in the menu planning department. That's why That's I'm forced to have to add vodka to my oranges because I have like three, I have like a hundred <laughs> oranges that we bought for like twelve bucks, and I'm like, how do I eat a hundred oranges in the span of like a week and a half? And I'm like, four oranges per cocktail. Let's do this thing. Let's do okay. this. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Melissa, it was so cute. Everyone who's watching at home, uh, Melissa, when she emailed me the first time, and she's like, hey, let's test the hangout. Let's see if it works. And she's like. In the words of Tone Loke, let's do this. And I was like, oh my gosh, a girl after my own heart. I was like, you're going to do great on Kitchen Party because we are ridiculous. And that you brought your own drink too. Um, oh, we want to do, do a cookbook giveaway. Um, we have a number on the screen. Melody, our producer, has put it up there. It's 310-601-4017, and that's our Skype number. Now, remember, for those of you who are tuning in, uh, you just have to ask, ask a question, any question you want, no problem. Uh, there's no, like, you have the answer wrong. It's if you're the first person to call, you win the cookbook. Um, just remember, this is not like a radio show where we put you on hold and then you, you <laughs> gracefully come into the show. It's like you call on the phone and we're in the middle of talking and saying something, and that phone's going to keep ringing until we answer, and then once we pick it up, you're on. So if you if you if you have the guts to call my people, no, I'm just kidding. I, we want you to call, of course. So uh, pick up the phone. I sound like I feel like I'm doing a. Um, I should have my husband call. He's sitting on the patio. <laughs> Babe, call into the show. We could rent a cookbook. <laughs> a, a signed cookbook, babe. A signed cookbook. So once again, three one zero six zero one. Four zero one seven. It is on the screen. It's one of those images on the screen right there. You should be able to see it, even if it's um, even if it's small. So we'll keep talking. So let's talk about. So how did the cookbook deal? Because we have a lot of food bloggers who uh, we run a food blogger conference called Tech Munch, and a lot of the folks who are on our database or who are following us on Twitter and stuff like that are they want to do a cookbook. They want to um, see their name in print. How did, how did, so I mean, wait, obviously, first, can I roll back and say that, because I'm going to plug myself for a minute, I have been wanting to come and speak at Tech Munch for so long, and I'm like, what? Like, why? What? Okay. Come on. Okay, we are doing <laughs> L.A., and we're doing San Francisco. The next time we do L.A., which we think may be in September, you will, will be on the agenda. Woo! Woo! It's oh, such we have a phone call. Wait. Oh, my gosh. It's not my husband, call. I promise. Okay. <laughs> we have a phone call. Hello? Okay. Hello. 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 Who's this? Is that it? Yes. It's Danielle. Danielle! Danielle, I'm stuffed? Yes. Hey! Yay. Hey, Danielle, <laughs> tell us what your blog is so that everyone can tune in. Oh, uh, Peaceful Cooking at uh, peacefulcooking.blogspot.com. Woo! Danielle and I know each other because she has been a Bake Space member, I think, since like 2007. I'm looking at it. <laughs> One of our favorite members of all time. So, so you have to ask any question. Do you have? Do you have a? I mean, whatever question you want, you win. But if uh, uh, make anything a good one. I want, any question, <laughs> it doesn't have to be cookbook related or, or you know, just just um. Something Maybe she'd about. like to know where I got my beautiful new beach cover out. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I like the color. Did you spill any food? Any food on there yet? I have. Oh. No champagne either. It's it's a food free. <laughs> Actually, I, mean, I gotta walk away from the computer because I'm hearing our conversation over. From <laughs> <time ago. laughs> And, you know, uh, Danielle is actually in Burbank, so she, it's like, well, I feel like we're all California girls here. Usually, yeah, it's yeah. like, we're it's like the Tampa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like the usually when Jeff is here, it's like everyone who calls in or tweets is like, "We're in Tampa. We're in Tampa. We're in Tampa." So I feel like finally we are representing SoCal people. 
Danielle, I'm in Burbank too, so tell me, what's your favorite Burbank restaurant? Oh gosh, I just went to this one, um, oh my, Volcano. Oh, Volcano, oh. is that down on San Fernando? My lights just went Yeah, I, we went there, and I'm going to get this, so I can't eat anything there, but they have the most amazing vegetarian meal. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was just in love with it, I need to go back. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I can't even remember what it's called, but it's got some pretend noodles in there and stuff like that. It's a vegan dish. But so I, I still need to ask a question, don't I? Yes, but Danielle and I, we uh, just so the other folks know, we uh, Danielle and I have this thing where we meet and eat cupcakes together. It's like our <laughs> our little <laughs> yummy, <laughs> yummy, yummy cupcakes over them while we eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have a good time. And Danielle actually made some stuff at Tech Munch last year. Um, oh, you made a cheese. She makes the best cheesecake with like a pomegranate mm, topping. Yum. That is Danielle. Can you tweet that out? That recipe out in the kitchen party hashtag? Because if anyone wants to make a, a cheesecake, that is it's yeah. really, really good. Yeah, I'll I'll tweet it out when I get off the phone. You know I what? Don't I'm gonna make I'm gonna... cheesecake, but I receive cheesecake on my doorstep <laughs> at any time. <laughs> at any time. I receive cheesecake on my doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make sure we can all get together. Yes. <laughs> we can eat it. We'll eat the whole thing, all four of us. There you I'm, I'm going to jump in and ask a question on Danielle's behalf so that she can win the book. Um, Melissa, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, how you brought your children along on this, on this plan. Um, from what I understand, you're not serving chicken fingers and uh, spaghetti with butter for dinner every night for your kids. And pizza. <laughs> um, I, you know, when they were really little, they were eating great, great food that the babysitter was making while I was at work. And so they've always eaten a little bit of everything, but I just serve one meal. So I don't make adjustments and I don't treat food like it's going to be, you know, sometimes you get the, oh, you know, it's broccoli, you know, and then you push it towards them like so hesitant, like, I don't know if you're going to eat this. And then they immediately in their heads, like, you know, think, oh, broccoli's bad because, you know, why would she? So I serve everything in my kitchen with complete happiness, even if I don't like it. And they <laughs> taste, and I listen to what, um, I listen to what they say about food. So when they say they don't like something, I ask them why, and they have to explain why they don't like it so that I can understand, as the person that provides most of their food to them, you know, what it is and how I can make sure that they have healthy eating habits. But just, you know, saying, I don't like that, that doesn't fly for me. I don't, you know, I don't, I have my aversions too, but it can't be, you know, I only eat white food, you know, I mean... Have you ever met an adult that has those crazy eating habits? Like they only eat white food, and you think, "Wow, like where did that start?" It starts from like the home, the family food culture. It starts from you know what that family, how that family you know eats all during life. And and I just think that I treat food as something that's to be enjoyed at the family dinner table. I treat it as something that it's like a for us to sit down together and they're so excited to be there with their mom and their dad sitting down having something to eat slowing down for the day and so the food becomes enjoyable because of the experience and so that's how I deal with with food with my kids and I make them part of the experience I mean they can tear lettuce for salad they you know I haven't picked up a vegetable peeler in two years because they do all that work <laughs> and I just think it's a matter of, um, you know, getting them involved in a way that makes them feel proud about food in general and not that it's something that, you know, you just shove down your face to get to the, you know, to the TV or, you know, or the back to online after you eat dinner. So it's all part of the process and that's just our family food culture. Everybody has a different family food culture. Ours is just to come around the table and eat good food that's prepared with love and, they get into that and, and they like that. So, you know, every once in a while they get something there and they're like, mm, this wasn't, mm -mm, this wasn't so good. <laughs> we didn't like this. But they sit down and they eat it with us, you know. And adults are the same way. I don't eat scallops, but I serve them to my family because they love them. So, you know, I just, when I make a scallop dish, I just load up the veggies for me and serve them all the scallops. So there's always a way to work around it. Now, if I do 
Oh, I was going to say, that reminds me of Daria with Summer Tomato, who was a guest a few weeks ago, who she, um, she the, 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 her purpose is eating mindfully. And mm -hmm. when you're sitting down, and I've been trying to do that, I, it's like I've had her, her saying in my head for the last few weeks, it's like, you know, I usually am at my desk, like, trying to go, like, I mean, literally, like, pouring it into my mouth, you know? <laughs> it's really, I should be we have a stressed. phone call. We do. So anyway, so that, I think that's a, tr a growing trend now that I, I'm so happy to see happen. So you Melody, do you right? want to take the, uh, the, the, uh, the phone call? We've got it on. Hello. Hi. Hi. Who is this? <laughs> this is Kimberly. Hello, Kimberly. Are you, do you have a blog or a Twitter handle that you can promote out so everyone can I, find you? I actually you? do follow you on Twitter, yeah. <laughs> what is your... What is your blog? It's at K.R. Culbertson. You know what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. It's at K.R. Culbertson. C-U-L-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Yes. Where, where, where hey. are you calling from? I'm calling from Portland, Oregon. Oregon. Oh, Very yeah. Cool. I just found your Twitter handle. I'll send that out to everybody. Thank you, Renee, for tweeting that. I'm Thank trying to follow the conversations, too. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Any so questions for our guests? Sorry, Babette, I didn't mean okay. to. Well, I, I've, been having a, I've been having difficulty following this on uh, Google Plus because my, my computer is rather old. So, um, so um, the subscription to Fresh 20, I mean, is that, um, is there like a book that goes with it or what? So the book is, a little so, bit. yeah, no, sure. So I have two things. You repeat everything. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. So the two things. So I have a, the Fresh 20 is a weekly meal plan subscription service. And that's been going for about three years. And it's $5 a month or $49 a year. And you get content every single Friday for the following week so that you should shop on the weekends and, and, you, and, and get your shopping and your prep and everything done for the following week. And, and out of the out of this service, um, I was asked to do a cookbook uh, that kind of um, was a, a full live in color version um, and a good guide to go along. So it talks about the pantry 20 and the best kitchen tools to use and then it has 16 weeks of seasonal meal plans. Um, so the two can live very separately. We have a lot of subscribers um, that um, don't have the cookbook yet, and we have a lot of cookbook um, people that bought the cookbook that aren't subscribers. But um, they they are great companions because the cookbook is just like everything's in color. There's a picture for every single uh, uh, every single meal plan, thanks to my wonderful photographer husband Trent and. Um, just so many other things about how to shop at the farmers markets, how to deal with picky eaters, and um, you know, there's family food pro profiles in it about family food culture. So the book is kind of like the service, like on steroids. Okay. Do you have anything in in your in the Fresh Twenty about doing preserving or anything like that? I don't. I mean, I, I know that that's a trending um, to like actually preserve um, fruits and vegetables. It's not my specialty. I'm still trying to learn like the best way to do that, and I can't wait for the summer because I think that there's so many opportunities. Like, I'm a strawberry crazy fanatic, so I'm actually learning about um, canning and preserving as well because I do think it's a great way to use the produce when it's when it's at its freshest, when it's at its peak season and and preserve it so that you can use it you know into the fall and into the winter so right now we don't but stay tuned because we will okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, keep I'll keep watching that's great thank you hey, Melissa where can people get your book everywhere I think it's at um, it's online at like amazon.com Barnes and Noble um, the independent but it's probably um, a house too isn't it <laughs> it's where it's probably at Powell's Books. 
Yeah, it, I mean, and there's different bookstores all over, and you can you can get it. And if it's not at your bookstore, um, just ask them to order it. It's some. Um, I actually haven't even seen it in a bookstore yet. I've been traveling and on the road, and I, people keep sending me pictures from bookstores. They're like, "I saw your cookbook in a bookstore today," and I was like, "Well, I haven't seen one yet, so I'm gonna have to get to a bookstore to <laughs> see one." But um, yeah, it's available everywhere that books are sold. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we appreciate you calling in. Sure. Thank you. The, uh, will you be you, will you be back next Thursday? Gone. Oh, we may have gotten Gone. disconnected. Oh. Silence. <laughs> if you're watching, she's like, "No, I'm not coming K back." <laughs> Kr <laughs> underscore uh, Clubertson. If you're watching, please come back next week. We would love to have you. So we only have about three more minutes left in the show. So I want to make sure, we, we talked a little bit about where people can find the book. What about online? What can they find online if they come to your website? Like maybe maybe some people just want to try out or get some tips. What, if they come to your website, yeah. what will they find? Well, on the, on the web at the fresh20.com, we have um, you know information about the, the book and the service. This, and we have, you know, a blog on our website um, that talks about different cooking things. Um, and you can sign up for a, a free trial week to kind of check it out and see if you can make it work, Babette. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's um, to the point. <laughs> I appreciate your direction. No, no, I understand, I actually, I'm though, the hesitant. I, I, you know, I understand. It is difficult to make. A commitment and changes, but one of the things I was talking with Renee about was that it's just small changes. You, you can't change the way that you do everything like overnight, right? So for me, it's just like making the small changes every day that are necessary, or every week. Like, you know, what's a change a week, or what's one change a month that I could make to get me like to feel better and spend less money. So I mean, maybe I it's just, just come committing over to, your to like house and eat. There you go. That's People only do. Cost you like <laughs> a few of my husband's friends just kind of show up, like around lunchtime or dinner time. I'm like, hmm, it's interesting that they come by at the same time all the way. So people do just come. There's always food at my house. Um, so you're you are both welcome anytime. Uh, but just little changes. Maybe just commit to one day a week that you guys are gonna like have stay at home, cook at home Tuesdays or something like that. Or make it right after kitchen party, right? Because you know, you're home. Yeah. Right after kitchen party, you could whip up a, a meal. I'll start with the cocktail just... before kitchen party, and then we'll end with the... <laughs> well, you have been absolutely delightful. I'm so happy, Renee, that your connection seemed to have lasted the entire show. I can't believe it. I'm, I can't. I'm surprised. <laughs> I look at your face. You're all like... <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, we, we, it was kind of touch and go for a little while. Hey, Renee, do you want to tell us anything that you're working on before we um, before we sign off? Anything coming up? Wow, I wish I could say something really exciting. I'm working on this really uh, kind of complex recipe reorganization at the paper, and it's really not anything more fascinating than that right now. <laughs> so really the most fascinating thing I did this week was inter interview Melissa for a story for the Daily Dish blog. Um, when does that so, come out? Does that, um, uh, does, that'll probably be tomorrow or Monday, but I'll tweet that out with the kitchen party hashtag. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so, uh, Melissa, what's next? Oh, what's next? Well, I, you know what? I'm, I'm out promoting the book right now, and I think that it's summer. My kids are getting out of school next week, and I'm going to be in my kitchen, like, developing some new projects over the summer. I, I literally, I know it sounds crazy, and I'm, I mean, if anybody knows me, they know I'm such a, like, hard-driven, like, businesswoman, but, like, this summer for the next couple of months, I really just want to be, like, in my slippers, in my kitchen, cooking, and, you know, planning for some really cool fall launches of some, some interesting projects that we have, so for the next couple of months, it's going to be some good stuff brewing in my kitchen, so you guys will have to come over. I was just going to say, so the likelihood of you being home is good. So when we do come it home, is. there will be food. <laughs> it is. Babette, it is. I'm going to come and pick you up. I'm going to come pick you up one night, Babette, and we're going to go over to her house for dinner. 
Oh, I thought you were going to oh, take me for donuts. <laughs> oh, for do no, okay, so we have to make a phone up date because I really, really want to taste these phone nuts that everybody's crazy about. So that I'm I'm so that's real, guys. That's that's real. We gotta okay. do some Okay, phone nuts. maybe okay, how about this? How about we pick up phone nuts and then go over <laughs> to your house and we'll have we'll split phone nuts for dessert. Would that be okay? Split. No, no, I need my own phone nut. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I kind of want to. I kind of want to drive to the phone nut shop and literally stuff it in my face on sight. Okay, but I want to go to your house for dinner. <laughs> want to eat at your house? Okay, we'll start off with appetizers and get a phone nut, and then we'll head over. We'll be. Yeah, actually, we'll pick Melissa up so that we have to go to her house, drop her off, and be like, "Hey, what's that smell? Oh, yeah. it's, it's a food. It's a food crawl. We're doing a food crawl, and we're starting with phone nuts. Yeah, <laughs> and we're ending at my house. Okay. <laughs> awesome, we're ending guys. at my house with quinoa, but we're starting with phone nuts. <laughs> hey, gotcha. you know, that's a very L.A. thing to do. It's like in denial, you know. Well, uh, actually, we have to start at Babette's house with orange Julius drinks, oh, and then phone nuts, and then my house for quinoa. <laughs> you know, yeah, totally. Yeah. Very smart. Um, <laughs> you guys have been awesome. We're going to go back through the kitchen party hashtag, make sure we haven't missed anything. Thank you so much for calling in. Danielle, you won the cookbook. So email me or I'll email you to get your address so we can send you that cookbook. Um, once again, every Thursday we bring our favorite people in food. We bring them into a Google Hangout. We chat about all the cool things they're working on. And you are part of the conversation. So we hope to see you next Thursday. Remember, it's always 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. You can find us at YouTube on Big Space TV is our username. Please subscribe so you get all of our, our feeds. And all of our shows are archived there as well. And Melissa, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. This was fun. Yay. You'll be back. I'm off to, I'm off to uh, the Taste of Avalon tonight. Ooh. Who knew? Like, well, he didn't even know. But there's a food festival here tonight, so. Very go cool. <laughs> Yay! I gotta go to Catalina. My boyfriend's never been, so we gotta we gotta check that out. It's been fun. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Have a great week. Bye, Bye. guys. Have a good weekend. <laughs> oh, is this where the head thing comes in? Oh, right. Yeah. You have to do a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a shoulder thing. Uh oh. Little shoulder thing. I'm gonna do an arm roll. Oh, that's Freddie's <laughs> first arm roll. <laughs> I can continue the arm roll. <laughs> oh, hey, maybe we can get it to line up. <laughs> okay, watch. Uh, oh! Wait, are you guys lining it up with me? Oh, really? <laughs> but you're going the wrong way. Oh, oh, you know what? Oh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Wait. Oh, wait. Now I'm going the wrong way. Wait. Here, I'll oh, go. Why don't we do the okay. ones and make it even? <laughs> you keep switching. Right. <laughs> How about this way? <laughs> oh, that we can do.